This is my first reveal, so bear with me. And with that being said, let's get this show on the road. Our chapter opens up on a beautifully drawn and colored page telling us who our main character is, a swordsman in the 11 year of Meiji calling himself Erironi, and ends with a message to the future, one more adventure to Hokkaido. After, we see Karu paying respects to her late father. It's revealed that today is the anniversary of his death. Karu tells the viewers that he died in a battle during the Xi'an War, leaving behind his dojo 16 years ago. The Kamiakashin Dojo is blossoming, as the new students all practice in the space that we once saw Yaiko and Karu did in the original manga. We see Yaiko at this point calling out to our new characters Aran and Ashitaro. Aran makes himself known, coming out of the bushes, with a book entailing the secrets of the Kamiakashin Ryu that he traded a bag of sweets with Kenji to obtain. He challenges Yaiko, stating that he doesn't need lessons to become great, and with this, Watsuki's comedy shines, and in my opinion, I like it more than I did in the Hokkaido prologue. The chapter then explains to us via Karin's narration who Aran is for anyone who did not read Hokkaido prologue. Basically, it gives us a rundown of Aden, his full name being Aden Inoue, and recaps his origin. His father was a westerner, he's a legitimate child, and has a criminal record for being a stowaway. After the events of the prologue, he came to the dojo to live as a student. A few pages later, we open up to a beautiful spread with Kara and Kenshin at the end of the manga with flashbacks in the background of all their struggles from the Tokyo arc to the Jinshu arc. It's revealed that Kenshin gave up his Sakabato to Yaiko as we saw in the spin-off Yaiko no Sakabato. However, he continues to use Hiten Mitsurugi Ryu for those who are in need, by wielding a cane made to look like a sword. An interesting choice by Watsuki, I must add. At the end of the original manga, it's said that Hiten is mostly ineffective now, so I'm lead to assume that he cannot use anything super special at this point. No. Um, nine Hits of the Dragon, if I remember correctly, and no Ame Kageriu no Hirameki. Tsubame then enters the scene, telling Yaiko and Kenshin that Ashitaro has gotten himself into some trouble with law enforcement. The panel changes to Ashitaro at the Akabeko. He's reading a little sign with Sanosuke's picture on it. Tei sees our young Ashitaro staring at the sign, and she asks if he's Karu's new student. She then reveals she's met him behind the shop at one point in time. I assume he was rummaging through garbage because that's what he was doing in Hokkaido. Ashitaro doesn't pay too much mind to her comments as he asks what the sign states, revealing that he himself cannot read. Ashitaro is here out of hunger, naturally, but he doesn't have any money. So Tei offers him to work here for the day in exchange for food, and naturally, he takes that job offer. He greets three customers at the door. An old lady, a rather tall gentleman, and a familiar face from our Hokkaido prologue. The girl himself and Aran happened to meet during that time. She reveals her name to be Asashi. The panel after shows the gentleman that comes in with Asashi slap Ashitoro on the shoulder with something. From his conversation, it seemed that he's familiar with our main character, which is quite interesting. The three sit down and start talking as Ashitoro gets to serving. The old woman states that she hasn't seen Ashi since the time she sent her out as a soldier for the Shishio faction. The man comments on her being alive and not telling them about it. Ashi states that she was deep in the mountains trying to make money, and the money she spoke of was later revealed to buy her freedom. The old lady holds up a paper to Ashi, claiming that she was bought for 200 yen and in order to buy her freedom, she would need 2000 yen. It's revealed that Ashi cannot read as she panics out of confusion. The gentleman singles Ashitaro after returns with their meal, asking him to read what the note says. Ashitaro replies, saying that he's unsure what it says. Before he could finish his sentence about having Aran deal with the money, he was attacked by the gentleman, once again causing him to go into the table. With that, the old lady discusses her next job for Ashi holding up an envelope. Ashi then shouts that she does not want to get her hands dirty anymore. She does not want to be a killer. She wants to shine in this new era. With that, Ashitaro attacks her from the back, saying to get out of his way and to leave Asashi alone. As the Kenshin Gumi arrives on the scene, Ashitaro is on the rooftops of the Akobeko fighting off police officers. Kenshin intervenes, but Ashitaro swings out of him. Kenshin insists he calms down, but Ashitaro yells at him, asking him to get out of his way. The Bigenjin Ashitaro wields becomes unsheathed, fully burning the cane Kenshin has within his grasp. 
Ashitaro unknowingly uses the first secret sword, Homura Adama Burning Sword. With this, he Kenshin as Yaiko for the Sakabato before using Shoryusen, incapacitating Ashitaro. And this goes back to what I said before with Kenshin, with um, Kara, I should say, saying that Hita Mitsurugi has become mostly ineffective. And Shoryusen is not a very powerful move. I believe Yaiko in the um, Kyoto arc actually recreated Shoryusen. Later that day, Ashitaro awakens from the dojo and is scolded by Aran. As Kenshin states, if he uses the sword once more, it will be taken away. Which I think it's pretty good on Kenshin to take a little bit of charge. This would also serve for some great character development for Ashitaro. I can't wait to see him grow and become stronger and be able to control the Mugenjin, maybe even similar to how Shishio was able to. We later see Karu inviting Ashi to stay with them at the dojo similar to Adan and Ashitaro. Hyaiko, Kenshin, and Karu discuss the envelope Ashi had with her. Upon opening said envelope, a picture of Karu's father is inside. It seems that he's alive and well in Hokkaido. Not dead as we all presumed. And with that, Kenshin and Karu decide it's finally time to travel to meet her father. This chapter closes on Saito and his men on a hunt, most likely, for the Shishio faction in Hokkaido. And it's a great throwback to Cherry Blossoms in Spring, with Aoshi mentioning Saito's on a mission in Hokkaido, but he's doing well for himself, and it does look like Saito is doing well for himself. What can I say about this first chapter? In my opinion, it was really well done. A lot of people on 4 had their grabs about it, calling it horrible, trash, and all kinds of harsh things. But for me, Hakado's first chapter was brilliant. Watsuki's new art style is to die for. It feels like a mix of the original Rurouni Kenshin all the way to its end in the Jinchu arc. I enjoyed it a lot better than the prologue, and honestly, I'm looking forward to this arc. There's a lot here to build upon, and I have a feeling Watsuki won't let us down. Because, if I remember correctly, Hokkaido was something planned before Jinshu, so I believe that most of these ideas he already had in his head and now he's going to execute them. The only thing he's probably going to do now is squeeze Anishi into the story. But I cannot wait to see where this arc goes, I have high hopes, and I hope we see Sojiro. It'd be good to see Sojiro and Ashitaro meet again, since they've met in the prologue, and it would be good to see Saito. Probably Enishi fighting side by side with Kenshin, although I don't want Enishi to take, not Enishi, I don't want Kenshin to take full circle in this chapter, I mean in this arc. I would like it more on Yahiko and the new cast, or even the old cast, just leave Kenshin out of it. Do not let Kenshin do all the fighting. Let Yahiko take the mantle of the Sakabato, as he rightfully should at this point in time. Let Ashitaro learn how to better control his anger and the Mugenjin to engage in fights himself. Aran would be interesting to see him, you know, perfect his Kamiyakashi Ryu and take on a few fights himself. And I have a feeling that we'd even see Hanatoro in this arc maybe playing a pivotal part. Well, not really pivotal, but making a few appearances here and maybe engaging into a fight or two. I would really like to see how far he's come as a swordsman even though he has one arm because if I remember correctly in the um, Hokkaido prologue he was featured I'm not sure I have to go back and reread it but I believe Hanataro was featured in the Hokkaido prologue way back when and with that being said I'm your host Grim Toki. This has been Beyond the Animation. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. If you like what I had to say, see you in the next one.